Hello, I'm David Eads with BBC World News. Our top stories. Iran's presidential election has been won by the moderate cleric Hassan Rouhani. What does this mean for Iran's spiritual leader and the country's nuclear program? A deadly double bombing in the Pakistani city of Quetta. After a blast aboard a bus, a bomb goes off in the hospital emergency room treating the wounded. A huge show of support for Turkey's beleaguered prime minister as tens of thousands rally in the capital. Also, Kenya's Maasai warriors are bringing their colourful version of cricket to its spiritual home, that's Lords, in London. Well, we start with that breaking news. The Iranian Interior Ministry has announced in just the last few minutes that Hassan Rouhani, the reformist-backed presidential candidate, has won the election. Turnout was estimated at 80% among the 50 million Iranians eligible to vote for a successor to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Well, Mr Rouhani has said he wants to steer the country towards moderation and he's enjoyed the backing of the reformists led by the former president Mohammad Khatami. Well, to uh, discuss the uh, result of the election, I'm joined now by both Ali Ansari, who's an Iran expert based at St. Andrews University in Scotland, also Rana Raiminpour, who is uh, with the BBC Persian Service. Thanks very much for joining us. Ali Ansari, let me start with mm. you. A shock? It is a bit. I mean, it's been uh, quite a performance. I think uh, not only has Rouhani, I suppose, uh, surprised us in many ways, but I think what's been most interesting is the way in which the Iranians have surprised us. I mean, the Iranians, in the very late in the day, uh, certainly those on the more progressive or reformist wing, have come out in some numbers, and I think they've uh, they've produced this uh, surprise result. Runner, there was the possibility, of course, that reformists were going to plump for a candidate at some point, but to the extent with which the pendulum seems to have swung behind Rouhani, uh, that has caught almost everyone by surprise, hasn't it? Yes, and the result has surprised us as well, because the difference between him and the second person, Ghali Bov, who's the mayor of Tehran, is very large, and that has surprised everyone. That's why we're receiving reports that there are some street celebrations and people are now walking in some main squares in Tehran celebrating this news. Yes, we've got some sense on Twitter that's been going on possibly for the last hour or so, and I wonder, Ali, uh, it, it is the response one would expect from mm. reformists, but we ought to get a picture of um, Rouhani as a candidate. Uh, let's face it, all the candidates were vetted and approved by the Guardian Council. Mm. It's not like it was an open field. This is a man who's described as a moderate among conservatives. So what exactly could he offer those reformists? Well, what's striking is that the message he took with him in the campaign was quite radical. And I think that was deliberate because they wanted to get people out. I mean, there was a lot of scepticism among the voting public for, for obvious reasons, not only because of last, the last time round, but of course, uh, you know, Rouhani has not been seen by many of them as a, as a sort of a mainstream sort of reformist by any stretch of the imagination. But his message was radical, and it sort of begs the question about whether he'll be able to deliver, of course. I mean, he's raised expectations. And in what, I mean, give me one or two examples of that. Well, he said that, uh, you know, Iran needs to have better relations with the outside world, particularly the West. He wants, obviously, uh, the economy to be healed. But most interestingly, he sort of played to the student population and also journalists and others and said that this sort of atmosphere of securitization that took place over the last eight years has to end. And this is a very attractive thing, but it, it, it does, you know, one wonders how he's going to push this through. Well, Rana, that's pandering to the voters to a certain extent and, and a brave step to take for a man who's still nonetheless known. Actually, it's quite a quiet character, isn't he? He's a soft-spoken individual who's come out almost tub-thumping as the campaign has built. It is very brave and it's very difficult to imagine how he's going to uh, achieve any of these promises that he made during the campaigning. He said that he's going to try to release political prisoners, but that is why the judiciary is uh, de completely independent from his branch of power and it's been supervised by the supreme leader. So how can he uh, release any of these political prisoners? He doesn't have the power to do it. The questions are already beginning to mount up. Let's go over to Tehran, though, first, because Mohsen Asghari has been following the, uh, the gathering of the results for us, Mohsen, all the time. We have a result now. Um, can you give us the exact figures? 
Well, not as long as he's frozen like that, he can't, unfortunately. So we'll, we'll get back to Mosin if we can in just a moment. And it will be interesting to see the, the scale of it. But let's look at the slightly broader picture as well then. I am sure there'll be plenty of Western leaders thinking, hooray, we have someone we can work with. And in fact, they are very familiar with Mr. Rouhani, aren't they? Well, I do, but I, I think people will be generally agnostic in their approach. I mean, they will wait and see. I don't think... Uh, but, but he was known as a moderate beforehand in terms of the nuclear negotiations. Well, he was, known as, he was known as a pragmatist. I wouldn't necessarily put him as a moderate. He was known as a pragmatist, but even in the previous time when he was leading the nuclear negotiations, he had certain frictions with the reformist government of uh, Mr. Khatami. I mean, it wasn't entirely all, you know, uh, friendly. But nonetheless, he's someone... He's, he's, a, he's a known player in many ways. He understands the international system. He understands, uh, in a sense, negotiating on a, a diplomatic scene. He will be a, a, a new face, but a lot depends on who he brings with him. Well, I was just going to say, and there are some very familiar names in his camp, as yes. it were. Well, not only does he have, and, and I, I think lots of people would suggest that his, uh, his election success has been down to the fact that he had strong support from both former presidents Rafsanjani and Khatami, who brought with them a lot of people, a lot of reformists uh, who did say it's the choices between bad and worse. So, you know, they, 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 they bit their lip and went for it. But there are some interesting people there, a lot of them who've been sidelined and marginalised over the in past eight years, who may now come back into the, uh, into the political scene. And it depends really the sort of team that Rouhani is able to, to build up. Um, obviously, we're going to be looking at keenly at the response we get from around the world, not least Washington. In fact, we can go over to our Washington bureau now and get some uh, of an idea of the sort of reaction we can expect from there. Katie Watson uh, is there for us. Katie, how do you think this is going to go down? Well, as yet, there's been no official statement from the White House. The Iranian community here in D.C. Um, have said that uh, it could be potentially significant, um, but really the change in direction for Iran will also depend on the, uh, the West's reaction to Iran. So it takes two uh, to be able to change the dialogue, which in recent years has obviously um, has dwindled to very poor relation with increased sanctions um, coming from the EU and the U.S. So really it would be about Washington waiting for some sort of indication that uh, Mr Rouhani is offering a different approach before it's going to be too welcoming with arms open as to uh, who the new president is. Indeed. Well, Rouhani's been very careful to uh, not talk about the nuclear issue as a former nuclear uh, negotiator. So that's very much something that he has talked about, no change. But he has been much more um, wanting a conciliatory approach to uh, international relations. And most uh, interestingly, it's really about the economy. That's a worry for people in Iran. Um, and it's a worry for, for him to try and, uh, try and improve the economy, which has, in the past few years, um, been increasingly difficult with the, uh, the fall in the value of the so that's something that he um, will want to improve the economy and that will have to come through improved negotiations uh, with countries like the US which have been imposing increasing sanctions on Iran in the past few years. And we talk a lot, Katie, obviously about the, uh, the nuclear issues, but I suppose Syria also raises its head in a much more urgent way uh, and no one would expect, would they, any immediate change in Iran's approach on uh, Syria? Indeed, it's been very silent here in the White House. The last few, the last few days have been very much focused on the issue of Syria. Um, and obviously the, the US has come to its conclusion on Syria um, uh, with the increasing urgency of Hezbollah fighters and the support coming from Iran. Um, but on the, on the issue of Iran, the US, uh, the White House has still not issued a statement. It's still very silent on that matter um, and has had its, uh, had its um, been occupied in other things with Syria being playing top of the agenda. Understandably. Katie Watts and thanks very much indeed. The view there from Washington. Well, let's pick up on uh, what the views might be on an international level. Um, uh, Ali Ansari, just to give me a flavour as to what you would see as the logical response from the likes of London, Paris, I mean the EU, as well as Washington. Well, I, I would like to think that people will be open-minded. Um, I don't think people should necessarily be enthusiastic or show any sense of enthusiasm. I think this is something that might be misread in certain circles in Iran. Um, certainly coming from... Uh, so, so do you mean actually to be seen to be so happy to have Rouhani in? I think that would be counterproductive, be yes. I think that would be counterproductive. I think it would play into the um, his, his critics' hands. Remember, at the moment, we think he's probably one of about 51%. This is not a 
this is not a landslide on the scale that, say, Khatami had won in 1997. I mean, the, his conservative critics probably amount, probably did gain about, I don't know, 12, 13 million votes. They will certainly argue that. They will, they but, will but look for a, vulnerabilities. Sorry to interrupt, it's mm. a landslide in as much as he's done it in the first round. Mm. There was no great expectation that he, he was going to emerge no, this way. So once the, that reformist element said, he's the man to go for, this mm. welter of supporters comes straight well, out. I think, I think the achievement, and it is an achievement, has to be seen in the light of four years of pretty systematic repression. I mean, that, that's really what the news is. The news is, is that all these... Uh, commentaries about the death of you know reform or uh, progressive movements has been I think somewhat exaggerated let's put it that way and uh, that is an achievement but I'm also thinking about how his critics will will address this I would like to feel that conservatives and hardline conservatives in Iran will recognize what the message of the electorate was and the message of the electorate was enough mm. it simply was enough well the, the, the repression runner was there off the back of the last presidential election. I think most people would accept that. And the choice of candidates is still decided by the Guardian Council. But it is true, isn't it? There has been a democratic election, and within a matter of hours, what looks like a very straightforward, honest result has emerged, which perhaps was not the, chose, the ideal candidate for the Supreme Leader. That does tell us something, doesn't it, about the way Iran's approach It's very surprising, and it's difficult to justify why the Supre Supreme Leader agreed to this result, because he has paid a very heavy price well, in the Middle East. Well, if, if, if you can call the existence of the Guardian Council a democracy, because you can't have someone, a, a, a council that is not democratically elected to decide for you who you can vote for. So in that sense, Iran can't be called a democracy, at least uh, to the standards of the European democracies. But it is surprising because four years of oppression, as Ali said, uh, uh, two of the candidates of the previous election are still under house arrest. Thousands of people are in prison because of their political activities. And does it mean that the Supreme Leader is going to change? It's very difficult to, to say that because up until now there were no indications that he had a change of heart. Mm. How come suddenly overnight that has happened? So we've really got to wait and watch and see. Rana Ali, just for the moment, thank you. Don't, don't leave us, but uh, we do get a chance again to cross over to Tehran and uh, speak to the BBC's Mohsen Asghari. Mohsen, I hope you can hear us this time OK. Do you have precise figures for us? Uh, yeah, the precise figures has been announced that out of... Uh, 36 million 700 thousand votes that have been counted with a turnout of 72.7 percent. Uh, Mr. Rouhani has got 80, 18 million 600 thousand uh, and got the majority um, uh, in this election. Tehran Mayor Mohammad Bagher Ghalibov uh, was well behind in the second place. So we can say that uh, with an absolute majority, Mr. Rouhani is the new president of the country. We're getting um, word via social media, Mohsen, of uh, people getting out in the streets, a bit of a party atmosphere developing in certain parts of, uh, of Iran, probably in Tehran. Can, have you heard or seen any of that? Uh, it, this kind of news you know, was spreading among the social media and among the people here. Uh, I didn't have any opportunity to leave the office to go among the people and see what's going on on the streets, but it seems so. People are happy about the results and this is what they have voted for so far, so I can say that it is uh, predictable. Let me just ask you about the turnout there. You mentioned 72.7%. We thought it was a bit higher and up towards 80%, but would 72.7% be seen as a, a very successful poll, a very successful turnout? Considering what has happened in the last four years and considering uh, the all propaganda against this uh, election that there were a lot of groups they were talking about boycotting the election there were a lot of groups that they were uh, saying that this election is not um, uh, free enough or democratic enough so it's better not to take uh, part in that election I can say that 72.7 percent is much more successful for the system than it could seem uh, 10 days ago you know that the election campaign was um, uh, began very flatly in the country but all of a sudden it took off when the moderate figures put their weight behind Mr. Rouhani and uh, I, I was among the people in other streets I saw that how passionately young people poured onto their streets were celebrating a political festival in Tehran's streets in the nights before the election 
And on the day of the election, I could see long queues of people in different polling stations in Tehran that uh, was giving me this message that this election uh, is a, a, a good one for the people and also for the system, some, a win-win situation for both the sides. And now people are happy, and as you said, um, in some parts of Tehran, maybe there are some celebration. Well, it's certainly a win-win for that man at the moment, Hassan Rouhani, who has won the presidential election. Mohsen, thank you very much indeed. Uh, also, uh, Ali Ansari uh, and Rana Rampur, thank you very much indeed for your immediate reaction to, uh, to the result there. Thanks.